Welcome to Inside Scoop Live. Hi, I'm Irene Watson. I'm your host for today. I'm really delighted to be speaking on the phone with Henry Mascara. He is the author of Sleepers Run. Henry is a writer and artist born and raised in Caracas, Venezuela. He attends the University of Miami, Florida, where he obtained a double major in graphic design and film. As a writer, he enjoys researching his novels extensively, including gaining first-hand knowledge of some of his character skills. He currently resides in Los Angeles with his wife, dog, and cat. Sleeper's Run is his first novel. And um, as I've mentioned, he did a lot of research when writing his book, and most of it was hands-on, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. He uh, did things like urban survival training, he took flying lessons, and he took weapons training. And so stay tuned, because he's going to be telling us a lot about things that he experienced. Hi, Henry. Hi. Well, I'm sure glad to be talking to you. And uh, in your book, Sleepers Run, you've done a lot of uh, research. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the research that you have done, and particularly uh, urban survival training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was actually very interesting. Uh, uh-huh. I, I think you can divide the, the research in two. The one that was purely academic, and I was sitting down and, you know, reading up bunch of books and trying to, to assimilate as much as I could. And then there was the the active research in which I, for whatever reason, I just wanted to experience some of the things a character would in, in real life to understand either, well, actually both, the mechanics and the psychology that that takes to do some of the things that these people do. Well, tell me what you did. Well, the one that you mentioned, uh, Urban Survival, I think was one of the most interesting ones because it's so you know, uh, far away from what I, uh, at least, uh, have experienced in my life, that uh, I think that's the one that fascinates people the most. Yeah, and so I want you to tell me what what was some of the training that you did? Uh, very interesting things like um, uh, things from either stress management, for example, to <laughs> Uh, things a little bit more esoteric of how to blend in uh, with an urban environment, how to disappear in a crowd, how to read, you know, a crowd, how to open locks and things of the nature. So um, I spent three days uh, going through this class in the middle of nowhere in uh, outside of the Vegas uh, in Nevada. And uh, our final test was actually with what we have learned, we'll spend the whole day uh, running around, uh, the uh, the outside area of Las Vegas, and then we end up in the Strip, uh, and we had to do this while we have a team of trackers uh, chasing after us. So we had to use all the little tricks in order to make this happen. Oh, how interesting! And uh, so, tell me, you said the blending in to the crowd, and how would you do that? Oh, um, you know, you observe. Uh, you know, for example, a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. The, every neighborhood, every place has its, its own rhythm and its own uh, makeup. Uh, so, you know, if you go, say, to a middle-class neighborhood, there's some certain things that sort of blend in. They don't come out of place. Say, <laughs> if you're driving a Mercedes in the middle of this neighborhood, you might stand out. But if you drive... You know, uh, a Hyundai maybe. Uh-huh. You're know, not gonna be. So you know, you start. Uh, one of the things I teach is that to actually see uh, what's natural to that environment, and then you try to blend in into that environment. The way you dress, uh, the way you act, the the way you move around. You know, it's very different. Uh-huh. Then I then I open in experience because now, I mean. I'm a weekend warrior. I don't do this for a, for a living, but okay. you 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 come out, uh, you go out, and you, you start seeing things a little bit different. Things. Yeah, to I bet you do. I bet you do. And what a great experience to learn all these things. And um, but you also did other things like flying lessons. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that was. <laughs> That's so, probably the most frightening one. I bet. Uh, <laughs> no grounding uh, there. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, early on I knew I wanted to do something uh, that had to do with flying, uh-huh. and uh, so I thought, okay, well, you know, I'll go to a local airport, take a few flying lessons, and see how this whole flying thing is. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And you know, the premise is simple enough and, and harmless enough. 
uh, then you get into this little airplane. <laughs> and, uh, With only one engine? Only one engine. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have a, a very experienced uh, instructor next to me. And uh, and then you take off. And, you know, if you think turbulence is bad when you're in a big airplane, I mean, in a little airplane, you feel everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, flying in a handbasket. <laughs> and um, it was very, I mean, it, it's beautiful. I mean, for example, I live in Los Angeles, so, you know, flying over the, the, the coast of California and the mountains uh-huh. is very beautiful. <laughs> but it's a... Uh, not a simple thing to do. Uh, it, it requires a lot of focus, a lot of attention, uh, attention to detail too, uh, and uh, a lot of preparation. I mean, it's, it's incredible the amount of preparation that it takes before and after uh, you fly an airplane. And these are things I have absolutely no idea about. And, and you know, it was very uh, interesting to learn all of this. Oh, so you mean you just don't go get in the plane and take off? No, it's not like oh. <laughs> actually flying the plane. It, it's not the hardest part. It's, it's yeah. the the navigation part, of course. Is it's uh-huh. not. Uh, uh-huh. It's actually complicated. But flying the airplane, you know, it's it's very easy. It's probably easier than flying. Uh, I'm sorry, driving a car. Really? Yeah, but uh, the mechanics of it. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not that complicated. But everything else that you have to uh, keep in mind, uh, the communications with the with ground control and the control tower, and quit, which are two different things I found out. Uh, are, you know, th- those are the things that are really fascinating, you know, things that you have to keep in mind all the time, your uh-huh. bearing, uh, how high are you going, how fast are you going, uh, wing speed, I mean, things that you wouldn't even think about. So, Did you ever yeah. get over your fear? You know, I actually think I was enjoying it, but my my instructor didn't have a lot of patience. Oh no! So, and I, I made a mistake once on a takeoff. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he wasn't very happy with it, and he let me know uh, in so many words. He, you know, he just scared, you know, the, the life out of me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember I was so shaken that when we finished that lesson, I mean, I was sweating throughout the whole lesson after that. I bet. Uh, it took me forever to calm down. Uh, I was <laughs> yeah. so rattled by, you know, because he was really, you know, mad. He, he was not a happy camper. So, and then of course he calmed down and said, "Well, you know, you, you know, it wasn't that bad. I just kind of overreacted, but he already scared me." So, yeah. it was one of those things that I said, "You know what? Next week I have to show up and do it again. I, I, I can't, you know, I have to get back on the horse. I, I can't yeah. just go." You know, and let this be the last experience I had, and I did it a few more times, and you know, it helped. But you know, that part, I mean, that really, <laughs> that wasn't <laughs> fun. I said, so, "Hey, man, I'm new at this. You need to, you need to relax." And no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, Henry, do you find that after taking flying lessons in a small plane like that, and understanding and going through, you know, the turbulence? I've been in small planes, and I know that you feel everything. D- are you now when you fly on larger commercial planes? Do you have a different perception? Sure. Or understanding, yeah. Now I know what they go through. I, mean, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I just came back from a trip, and it, and it was, you know, when they're taxiing, you know, into the runway. Uh, of course, I'm not a pilot. You know, I, I don't understand absolutely everything. Right. But, but I have an idea. Okay, they're doing this, and now they're going to do that. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. at this point, the pilot must be doing this. And same thing when they're uh, about to land. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, all of these little turns and things that they do now they have meaning. Is like, okay, he's doing this because he's following into the flying the the the, the flying pattern that you mm-hmm. have to go around the airport. And so it, it does. I mean, all all of this research. Uh, even though it was done uh, for a book, it's actually uh, personally edificating. I mean, it really, you know, it's something that you really come out a little bit better, a little bit different after going through them. Of course, and, you know, your knowledge is different and your experience. And the other thing that I understand in your firsthand research was you also took some weapons training. Yes, uh, I have a, I have a, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to ask, what type of weapons were you training on? Oh, uh, handguns and knives. That, uh-huh. That's what I was using. Uh, I have a, a, a long history with martial arts myself.